shock absorb time. What's up guys welcome back to another episode of donnie does it today we are working on the first gen forerunner and i have a pretty cool idea that i want to show you guys i haven't seen this done before if it has been done before just let me know but uh stay tuned real quick before we get into this i want to show everybody that we do have everything mocked up and inside and mounted and we have our correct spring rates these are 100 pounds per inch over 150 pounds per inch. I do have some longer 200s. These are a 14 inch and so you can see there's quite a bit of thread up in there. Um, we're gonna probably want to use our longer ones once we get a bumper and everything's a little bit heavier up front. We can stiffen our spring rate a little bit but for now this actually achieves the ride height that I'm after. So again 100 over 150s. Got everything painted and welded and the whole front is actually looking pretty much complete um, outside of maybe just painting the track bar and getting everything lined up in the front I feel really good about the front um, on to the back I needed to do rear shocks on the back and when I pulled this axle out of the third gen I thought man it'd be really cool if I could reuse the shock mounts that are already on it and it looks like that might be possible I have mounted this with a tire on it. I've got a little bit of clearance. So now I'm just looking at this upper height. The axle was dropped all the way out. You can see my perches are swung all the way this way. Shackles are swung all the way this way. So it's dropped all the way out and I've got a little bit of room here. So I think what I'm gonna do is bring this down, you know, about, oh, I can't pull that down, uh, about an inch. That way it doesn't pull the shock all the way out whenever we've got full extension. Now this would be, if I was going nose down and it unloaded or whatever, it really should never get this deep. But uh, originally I thought about plugging it just over this hole, but it's, it's a little bit more stress there. And I've also got to clear the top of the U-bolts. So I think I'm gonna mount it at about, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 degrees forward, something like that. Um, and that way, when it's up and out of the way, this body will clear that. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna tack these in there and let's get into it. All right, got this one uh, tacked in there. Got this just because I'm trying to get the other side measured, but that is full extension. All my weight on it, and if I pull this bolt out, Got about, I don't know, quarter inch or so before it ends up bottoming the shock out, which is really what you want because if this unloads real hard, you don't want this to pull the piston out of the shock and blow it up. So I wanted to have just a little bit of room there. I actually originally was shooting for half an inch, but uh, I think I'm a little bit closer to a quarter, which is fine. Anyhow. Uh, yeah, I like how that turned out. So I'm gonna get the other side tacked in and then I'm gonna cycle it a few times and see kind of where it ends up. All right, got this side tacked up also. They seem to match as far as our degrees go. So that's good. I am gonna go ahead and put the tires on it and cycle it a couple of times and make sure that it clears both ways. So here we go. All right, got the tires on it. We're sitting at about 15 degrees at ride height. Took it off the jack stands and it looks like we've got plenty of room on both sides between both the U-bolts and the tire. So now I just need to kind of jack up one side, stuff that tire, make sure we still got room. You know, at the very, very worst case scenario, I could run like a a little wheel spacer back there. Hopefully that's not what we have to do. I'd really prefer not to. 
But let's uh, let's jack it up and see. Well, I'm glad I checked because jacked up one side and as the tire came down, it actually got a little bit lower than the mount and it did, did break the weld. So it does, this whole thing actually needs to come down probably another half an inch, which is fine. That's why we do these things. That's why I just got the tacks on there, but I really thought that I had it a lot closer. So anyway, probably need to come down another half an inch or so. All right, I think I have a solution for this. Got this side all the way up. Went ahead and strapped this one down. I measured how much more I have here. Yesterday I actually had this at full squish. I'm gonna have to trim just the back of that fender a little bit to get it to stuff full 38, but I have about three inches left there and about four and a half inches off the shock to the bottom. So I think we're just gonna move our upper shock mount down a full inch and that should be just about perfect. So I'll just mark a spot on here. We'll bring the whole thing down an inch on both sides and uh, that should be good. All right, so I moved the shock down an inch, got it tacked in, I'm liking the angle. Doesn't look just perfect when it's at ride height, but as this droops out, the axle actually swings this way, so that actually is the correct angle. So I'm gonna try to match it on the other side. I might actually need to put um, washers on either side of these just because this is a little bit more narrow on the Bilstein mount. So anyway, I'm gonna get that fully burned in and then we're gonna move to the other side. Okay, got the axle drooped all the way out and everything finished welded. I take this bolt out of here. Still have about an inch. So as that arcs back and forth a little bit that it might, and maybe even if we end up three link in the rear in the future, we should have plenty of shock travel. So that's cool. I'm excited for that. And uh, let's get this painted and done and cleaned up. Well, I am extremely happy with how this all turned out. Got some paint. Went ahead and probably tightened up my shackles because I painted all the way to the back. Everything's looking pretty good. Let's get these shocks in, get the tires back on, and uh, set her down. Well, it's a little bit taller now with the shocks on it. <laughs> Just kidding. It's still jacked up. I was putting tires on it. There they are. Labels out, labels up. Just like Bill Steen requests. Let's see how this, uh, let's see how it absorbs the shock. Shock absorb time. All right, I dig it, that was cool, good deal. Well, if you made it this far, I appreciate you. A couple other things I did kind of in between, so you guys could take a look at this. I uh, went ahead and really painted the whole frame. And I missed a spot right there, just because of the strap that was holding up my transmission. So I should probably go ahead and shoot that, just so it all matches. But uh, coilovers are in, frames painted, tower brace is painted. I also have an exciting addition on the inside here. Our Trident triple shift from Northwest Fab. I'm gonna show that in the next video where we talk about getting all this stuff set up. That's the third gen console, so I have a nice armrest, which seems like it's gonna fit, so. Anyway, I appreciate you guys staying tuned and watching this shock outboard. I know it's not technically an outboard because it is a third gen rear, but you can find these third gen rear axles for like 100 bucks on Marketplace all the time, so. Even if you have your own third members, you can just stuff in your third member into that third gen housing, bolt these shocks up and, uh, Put some tabs on the outside of the frame and you're good to go. So anyway, like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys' time. Peace.